so now this is the let us start with maxillary first premolar carving so before we start any carving we need to divide the block vertically and horizontally so uh, divide the vert um, surfaces vertically into two halves so each surface will be divided into two halves so draw all these vertical lines on all the surfaces then divide the length of the block into three equal parts the upper part the middle one should be little longer for the root and the base so similarly all the surfaces should be divided into three parts now the crown area crown area should be divided into further divided into three parts occlusal one third middle one third and cervical one third so similarly all the surfaces will have occlusal one third middle one third and cervical one third now let us start with the labial surface or buccal surface carving so this is buccal surface now before that let's see the labeling of the surfaces now as we know the premolars are wider buccolingually this is buccal cusp and this is palatal cusp so the crown is wider buccolingually and uh, narrow mesiodistally so accordingly this is our block so the crown is wider in this pattern so this surface i have labeled buccal the opposite will be palatal so this is our buccolingual and this is remaining two surfaces are mesiodistal so now let us start with the buccal surface now we have already divided the buccal surface now we are going to reduce upper two third same like incisor but in this uh, labial surface there is a prominent buccal ridge so instead of just reduce, reducing entire labial surface we will reduce in two parts the mesial half and the distal half so how to do the one half of the carver one of the one half of the crown so you have to hold this straight end of the carver on this border of the buccal surface and keep on reducing till you reach the center line and also you will get an inclination this inclination should not be much okay only the little inclination from the horizontal plane now the opposite side opposite side you hold again like this the cover should be at an angle but angulation should not be much very little and reduce the other half of the crown vertically and then you will get the buccal surface if you see from top you will see a uh, slope mm -hmm. so at the same time you will see a prominent ridge on the buccal surface this is same like a canine now reduce the cervical area of the buccal surface so as we all know the labial surface has u shaped curvature in the cervical one third near the cervical line so again with the tip of the cover near the straight end you hold like this and move around the cervical area in a u shaped manner keeping this cervical prominence intact below the cervical line below the cervical prominence reduce to get cervical prominence similarly the same cervical constriction should be done on all the four surfaces keep your the tip of the cover on the cervical line and reduce the cervical one third entire cervical one third should be reduced so that you will get cervical constriction similarly on the lingual surface the ling the cervical half of the crown should be reduced to get nice u shape curvature now the last surface distal surface similarly you reduce now this is the buccal surface see the cervical strength so all the four surfaces have been done now as we know the lingual the width of the lingual cusp is less as compared to buccal so therefore both the proximal surfaces are converging and we need to reduce this borders on the lingual surface so that the crown is nice u in shape so this is our buccal border so now i'm going to reduce this and this to get a u shape and the uh, narrow lingual cusp so for this i will just reduce i will reduce this line angle first like this so reduce this line angle first this line angle then this line angle 
and merge it merge along the surfaces so that there is no demarcation between lingual and proximal so it should become like this so nice u shape lingual surface okay so now we have done the lingual carving at the cervical carving now on the occlusal surface slowly slowly give occlusal convergence occlusal convergence to the buccal cusp and the palatal cusp so again hold this way and with the hand with the help of the straight end give occlusal convergence to one upper one third of the crown upper one third like this so the crown is converging and define your inclined planes on the buccal surface so now you have prominent ridge both the inclined planes and the crown is converging on top similarly the lingual cusp also cervical it is constricted but on the upper part also it is converging so that you have a uh, height of convexity in the center on the lingual surface but on the buccal cusp it is at the cervical area now as you as we know the height of the buccal cusp is longer than the palatal cusp will uh reduce the occlusal surface little on the lingual surface so that our occlusal plane is inclined lingually so like this see the occlusal surface is inclined lingually now our buccal cusp is larger than lingual cusp so with the straight end of the carver reduce so that you have sloping occlusal surface now this part is very important now the occlusal carving we need to carve two cusp inclined planes grooves so first of all you divide the occlusal surface in four quadrants equal four quadrants equal four quadrants so this central line which divides the buccal portion from the lingual surface will act as a central groove so here our central groove will form okay so now carve quadrant wise so first you uh, start carving one quadrant on the buccal cusp so how to do this uh, place this tip of the carver towards the marginal ridge but 1 mm inside and place it on the central groove so my straight end of the carver is on the central groove 1 mm inside okay and just move it behind and place it on the buccal border why because your straight end of the carver should be parallel to the central groove but on the buccal border i'll repeat the straight end of the carver should be parallel to the central groove but on the buccal border and 1 mm inside so now this is my position now you keep on carving and move towards the central groove but the pressure should be more laterally and centrally like this so that you'll get an inclined plane similarly when you carve the lingual cusp the opposite quadrant it should be near the lingual border but parallel to the long axis of the central groove so from here go towards the center exactly you have to stop exactly in the on the central groove start from here but 1 mm inside and reduce so that you will get an inclined plane like this like this so both the inclined plane should sharply meet in the central groove area see the angulation of the carver it is slightly angulated now to do this opposite end we can't do it like this because our tip should face towards the marginal ridge if i keep it like this my tip is facing towards the center and i don't want to reduce this so to carve the opposite quadrant i will turn my block and the same procedure i will follow my straight axis straight end of the carver should be parallel to the central groove but it is near the buccal border and again 1 mm inside from the buccal ridge i will reduce now the last quadrant reduce till you meet the buccal surface
so this is how now after doing this reduce extra wax little wax from the marginal ridges like this and remove the step your marginal ridges should be little higher carve this define the cusp buccal cusp and lingual cusp define the cusp so with the help of straight end of the carver define the cusp buccal cusp now lingual cusp lingual cusp and buccal cusp so this is how we can slightly make central groove little more deep so this is how occlusal surface is done and the crown is done now for the root part now for the root part there are two roots below each cusp so before we shape the root we need to divide the entire block into two halves buccal half and uh, palatal half now we can see this line on the proximal surface you have to leave 4 mm of wax because this this will be the root trunk below that you start dividing the block into two how to divide the block so now with the help of tip of the cover place it on this line 4 mm below the cervical line and start cutting the wax okay you need to cut with the sharp end cut and go deeper cut and go deeper so little from one side then little from distal side or opposite proximal side so you need to cut without cutting you can't go inside if without cutting you go inside the block might break so you need to cut and go inside cut and go inside you need to cut and go inside So this is how you have done through and through carving. Now, after this shaping of the root, now you need to carve like a single rooted teeth. Each half you need to carve. So let us start with the buccal surface. First of all, you reduce the extra wax in the upper half of the crown, like this. You have to hold it between two fingers and move horizontally. So slowly, slowly. all the surfaces keep on turning the block and reduce all the four surfaces all the four surfaces 